Hi again. Okay. This video, I'm going to talk to you about how to set up a truth table. So I've, I've simplified the example from the last video a little bit because I don't want to deal with a 16 row truth table. So we are down from uh, before we had A and B or C and D. Now it's just A and B or C. So this is the tree for uh, breaking down that sentence. Okay. Now, if you have a problem, if I assign you a problem to solve, it says something like, Complete the truth table for this sentence, A and B or C. Here's how you set it up. So first of all, your top row of your truth table, you're going to have on the right the sentence you're interested in. On the left, you're going to collect up all of the atomic sentences that appear in there. Now, if I had something where, let's say, um, A appeared a second time, we still just have three atomic sentence letters over here. So the fact that there's a repetition from A here to A there, that doesn't mean you have a new atomic sentence letter, right? Because remember the way uh, using the same letter works, that's supposed to be tracking a pattern of repetition. So I'll get onto this in a second, but if the rows of the truth table are supposed to be capturing different possible combinations of truth values, then Whenever the thing that appears back, whenever the thing that appears here is true, the thing that appears here is true. Whenever this thing is false, this thing is false. So I don't need an extra row to keep track of how those things might be different. But okay, so in this case, I collect up all the different letters that appear over here. In this case, there are three of them. Next, what I'm going to do is so based on the number of um, the number of atomic sentence letters I have. That tells me uh, how many rows my truth table is going to need, not counting the top row that we just put in. Um, and it's always going to be two to the power of the number of atomic sentence letters we have. Okay, so in this case, there are three, two to the power of three is eight. So I'm going to need eight different um, rows. Here's how to set it up. There is, you won't lose any marks if you set things up in an unusual order as long as you capture all eight possibilities. But I'm going to give you, give you a standard ordering um, for two reasons. Number one, um, if you remember this standard way of setting up the orders, then you will never risk missing some out. You'll always get them. And second, if you keep the standard order, um, that'll be easier for me to mark because I can, well, you don't, you don't need to be kind to me. But if you want to be kind to me, you can follow the standard ordering. So here's a way of setting it up. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. First of all, uh, we're going to figure out how many rows we need. We need eight rows, we said, because that's two to the power of three. Bear that in mind. OK, when we set this up, I'm going to start with the rightmost atomic sentence letter. So in this case, C. Um, just to make things easier because of the way I'm typing this in, I'm going to delete the other ones just so we can start a row with C, because that's what we're setting up first. So uh, here's how this is going to work. You're going to start out by saying, OK, I need eight rows total. I'm going to alternate true, false, true, false, true, false, all the way down for eight rows. So true, false, oops, I want those capitals. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. That's eight rows total. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the next atomic sentence letter over. So that one's B in this case. This time, instead of alternating true, false, true, false, I'm going to alternate two trues, two falses two trues, two falses, all the way down. So true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. Oops, true, there you go. Okay, and then I go over to the next letter, A. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and this time I'm going to alternate, instead of two trues, two falses, I'm gonna go four trues, four falses. So true, 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 that's four, false, 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 false. Okay, that may have been harder to see while I was typing it, but now that it's here, let's talk about what this looks like. So when we're setting this up, you can actually ignore the top part. The, the important thing here is the pattern. So we know we have eight rows. So I have here eight rows. And the pattern is the rightmost column goes true, false, true, false, true, false, all the way down. The next one over goes true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. Next one over goes four trues, four falses. If we had another letter, then it would be eight trues, eight falses. If we had another one, it would be 16 and 16 and so on. 
as long as you follow that pattern, you're going to capture every possible combination, every possible um, combination of truth values of A, B, and C. Okay, so that's always the first thing you do when you're setting up your truth table. Make sure that you get all of the different rows, uh, all of the different rows that you need. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna draw in these pipes just so it looks like we have a vertical line separating things. Okay, next thing we do is for each of those rows, I need to say, well, when A is true, B is true, C is true, what happens to this sentence? Is it true or false? What about when A is true, B is true, C is false? What about when A is true, B is false, C is true? All the way down. So I want to get ultimately a column of eight truth values underneath this sentence. Okay. The way we're going to do that is by doing the kind of thing that we did in the last video. So when I look at, when I'm asking, is this thing true on row one, line one, I'm asking, well, say I take this tree and I say, this is true, this is true, this is true. And I follow the structure of the, the tree all the way up by following the AND rule and the OR rule. Here, I'll give you a, I'll turn this into a combined uh, truth table so you can see the AND rule and the OR rule uh, at the same time. So, Mouse is giving me trouble today. Okay, so here's what A or B looks like. If I did A and B, then we're going to get something that looks similar but different. So where A or B is true anywhere except the bottom line, a and B is false anywhere except the top line. So the only way to make an OR sentence go false is for A and B to both be false. The only way for an AND sentence to go true is for A and B to both be true. Okay. So let's come back to our original sentence. We're looking at the row where you have true, true, true. So that's why I put true here, true here, true here. Now we want to check, do we get true up at the top or not? Well, first I have to check here. So when I have A true and B true, and I'm putting together with an AND rule, then I'm looking at the top line of this tree over here that states my rules. I'm looking at the AND column. There I have true. So that tells me this guy is true in this case. Now I want to check the thing at the top. So I'm checking is true and true. When I put that in my OR rule, what do I get? True and true, that's row one. That is true. So this sentence is true up here. So that tells me that's what I need to put into my truth table over here on row one. True. Okay, now what if I'm on the second row where I have true, true, false? Well, in that case, I'm changing C over here to false. So this is still true on this side because I'm still doing A, B with the AND rule that gets me true. Sorry, A true, B true with the AND rule that gets me true like we checked before. But now to go up top here, I'm using an OR rule. So we're looking here. Where are we looking? We're looking at the row where I have true or false. That's this row. So that tells me this thing. So once again, true. So I'll put that into my table. Down here I have true. Okay, next row, we're gonna go through and do all these same things. So next row, forget those things. So now we've changed C back to true and we've changed B to false. So that has to change here. Okay, so on this side now, I say I'm looking at the row where I have true, false. That's this row. I'm looking in the AND rule. So that's this one, false. So on this side, I have false. Now up top, I'm looking at false or true. It's an OR, OR. So I'm looking in this thing. And I'm looking in the row where I have false or true. And that's true. So that's what I get on this row of my truth table. False. Oh, yeah, true. I told you guys I would make mistakes. Okay, and you're going to continue doing that all the way down. 
Okay. You can do that by means of this tree. You can do that by means of writing the thing out. And I think, especially when you're new at truth tables, I recommend doing that. I think that can be very helpful to draw out the tree, just like when we're checking whether something is um, well-formed or not. But eventually, what you're going to start doing is doing that work yourself inside the truth table itself. So ultimately, when you answer a question on, say, a midterm or a problem set or a final exam, you'll need to give me a single column of values for your sentence. But sometimes it can be helpful to have some rough work along the way. So put it this way. In this sentence, I need to do two different rules along the way. Right? I need to have I need to apply an AND rule to whatever the truth values of the atomic sentences A and B are. Then I need to apply an OR rule to C, the atomic sentence, and what I just found for A and B. So it can be helpful to put a column of rough work underneath A and B to keep track of what this thing does on each row. So here's how that might look. Um, I should say, like I said, your final answer is going to need to give me one column of values. So if you're gonna have a column of rough work like I'm about to show you, you need to have some way of showing me which column is your official answer. In this case, what I'll do is I'll use lowercase t's and f's for my rough work and capital letters for my official answer. So we figured out when a is true and b is true, a and b is true. So I'll write that in as a lowercase t. Same thing happens here. We still have a true, b true, so that's true. When I have a true, b false, then a and b was false. Okay, same thing happens on this line. We have a true, b false, so that is false. Now we have a false, b true. Because it's an and rule, a false, b true, that's this line, and rule, that's an f. So over here in my rough work, that is false on the what are we on now the sixth line same thing again a false b true that's still false for an and rule and now when they're both false once again false okay so now i have this column of rough work right i've got that this part of the sentence that i'm writing under that is true here true here false 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 okay so then to get my official answer here's what i'll do um, and this can be tricky. It can be tricky to keep track of things. I recommend actually physically putting your finger on the things that you're putting together. So in this case, I'm not putting together two of my atomic sentences from those columns. But so down here, when I'm getting the truth value of the sentence as a whole, I'm doing the OR rule, because OR is the connective now, with the atomic sentence C, so this F, and the truth value of this thing, so the f from my rough work. So if I were working on this myself, I would put my fingers on these two spots, this one here and this one here, and then ask myself or rule on those two things. So we're looking at first f from this guy and then f from c, so that's the f f row, so that's the fourth row for an or rule that is false. So my official answer here is going to be that the sentence as a whole is false on row four. Okay, next line, we're doing false here. I am actually holding my fingers on these. False here, and C is true. So the false true row over here, it's an or rule, so that is true. Next one, false or ah, false or false, again, that's the fourth row, that I remember is false. False or true, that is the third row of the or table over there on the right of this video, so that is true. Then we have false or false, that's false. Okay, so our official answer is given by these capital letters here. When is this sentence A and B or C? When is that true and when is it false? Well, it's false when A is true, B is false, C is false. When A is false, B is true, C is false. And when all three are false. In all the other circumstances, in all the other rows of the truth table, in all these other possibilities, the sentence is true. 
And as far as TFL is concerned, that is the whole story on this sentence. We know everything about it. When is it true and when is it false? Well, of the eight possibilities there are, of the eight possible ways that A, B, and C could be, five of them are true, specifically those five, and three of them are false, specifically these three, these three. Okay, that's how truth tables work. 